This is KFM 4, part 2. She's freaking me out. I don't know, but right now, I'm ready to work. <laughs> Please, dear God. Bethany, you act like I'm working all freaking day. <sighs> it's freaking 11. Yeah. We've been working all day. I didn't say we haven't been working all day. Yes, you did. It's just taking all to work. your stupid computer. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk about the Kennedy siblings. Episode four. Welcome to Blood and Business. I'm Bethany. And I'm Cassie. Okay, so we all know that Cassie is extremely, like, connected to Rosemary's story. Bethany's absolutely calling me out for having favorites. <laughs> Exposing know. my fear that after the Kennedys, it's all downhill because who else is going to be this freaking interesting, confusing, dramatic, influential, inspiring, inspiring impactful oh beautiful. my gosh and have this many historical events in it as well that are like interesting i don't know but i sent you a tiktok last night did you watch it about cleopatra clearly not <laughs> was it about cleopatra now that i'm saying that i'm like <laughs> was it even about that i think she went to like war with her siblings like she what yeah no okay let me see what it is yeah could you make a video about cleopatra's life this is um, a TikToker named Oh Tani shoot, Burlow. I know her. Yeah, I know yeah, her. Yeah, you follow her. That's yeah. the only reason I can see it. Yeah, Cleopatra goes to war with her siblings. You're kidding. I'm not. We can literally do that. Yeah. Anyways, I think that's gonna be an interesting story. I think that like little blips in time that that are super freaking old are are going to feel dramatic just because of the time period, you know? Yeah. Because it's such but, another world. But mm, the Kennedys. It's not going to be anything like the Kennedys. I, I don't think it will be nearly as emotional. I think the Kennedys will be the most emotional. And, and like that's most all vulnerable. I freaking care about. Yeah, Cassie, I'm a four. <laughs> Cassie just wants to feel. And I'm like, she rages war against yeah, the exactly. siblings. Cassie just hasn't cried over a person more or a relationship like Rosemary's relationship with Jack and Rosemary's relationship with Eunice. Cassie yeah. has talked so much about. Which book were you reading that we were in the living room or in the dining room? At mom and dad's. No, I wasn't reading a book. I was reading the JFK library.org. I was just kind of like getting a synopsis on each sibling. And uh, I don't know if I had started the Rosemary book yet. I, I don't, don't think, think you I did. I think no, it was just. You did Rose or you read that book a lot later. Yeah. They have just little bios on each Kennedy sibling because it's obviously the each JFK Kennedy. site. So they have tons of JFK stuff. Yeah. But then they have like. Each Kennedy family member. Yes. Rose. Joe, Joe Jr., everybody. Grandparents. So I was just kind of getting my bearings while I was reading An Unfinished Life, uh, JFK by Robert Dalek, because um, obviously it's mostly from JFK's perspective. And I wanted to be able, when the other siblings are mentioned, I wanted to like be able to start mapping everything out in my head and like know who people are. And I was reading Eunice's bio. Okay. When I just started <laughs> weeping and I was like, Bethany, should what I tell the you? Heck? Do I want to tell you or should yeah. we wait? And so we couldn't figure out, even from season one, we couldn't figure out, do I want Bethany to hear the scripts? before we perform them mm -hmm. or record because I kind of want her like genuine first reaction mm -hmm. but it's just not practical at all because we don't have enough people on board well, to there's that <laughs> but then like we said also there's absolutely way too much information to process that quickly and I miss a lot of stuff that because I'm writing the whole thing and I'm reading everything and Bethany's watching documentaries with me too, but she's more so on the editing side. So she doesn't get... I'm a lot more post-production. Yeah, she doesn't get like all the, the articles and everything. So it's easier for her when I'm telling her the story to just hear what I'm saying to her and be able to process those events. And in season one, I think I heard the Disney's for sure before the Ringlings and the Kardashians. So the only one I didn't know about was the Bouvier sisters. And that was my genuine reaction to that. And that's and the that's one that the we're one. kicking ourselves over that we didn't like we pause missed stuff. more. We missed things that were huge and emotional. You can tell because we've brought the Bouviers up 
over and over and over again because we're still processing because we're still like why did we not do that justice but anyways we've already talked a little bit about the siblings perspective and all of this but we're going to go into a little bit more detail and put ourselves in their shoes it does seem interesting that as time went on and as the world kind of started to wake up and come around to advocacy to uh more disability education because obviously the kennedys weren't the only ones teaching people about disabilities but It's interesting that as time went on, things started to look different and the Kennedys started to make different decisions. Like JFK is a very, I feel like, clear example. His dad maybe saw, hey, you're you're letting these bills and stuff pass over your desk and you are not advocating for your little sister. Why don't you go visit your little sister? Why don't you go see who she is, what happened to her and like rethink about that now that you're an adult. He goes to visit his sister and from that moment on starts to make very different decisions. Mm -hmm. And Joe starts to speak out about it. And I don't know if that was just them processing the trauma and eventually healing and coming around. I don't know if that's them learning because Joe mentioned as I get older, I talk to more people and I realize actually a lot of people face these same problems and struggles in their life. And maybe they were just like, Yeah, becoming more aware, learning more. And maybe, too, it it could have been that Rosemary's brain had time enough to heal and to sort of, like, get its bearings. And we know that parts of the brain can regrow Mm -hmm. and you can strengthen muscles and strengthen physical therapy, mental therapy, therapy, art therapy, talk therapy, all these different things. And we know that she was getting that treatment. Yes. And she was still getting even, like, physical therapy and stuff as well. So... It could it's have been likely. that Rosemary was just coming more to and, and her personality was coming more to the surface. She was gaining more consciousness. And they were realizing the case isn't closed. We Ro- Rosemary does still need us and we can still have a relationship with her. And right. they all started to kind of show up more. Yeah. Or the nuns who were taking care of her called and were like, hey, we think that maybe Rosemary said something because <gasps> she was quoted. Yeah. She was quoted saying Kathleen, like murmuring it underneath her breath, kind of. Maybe one day she said one of their names and the nuns heard and called home and said yeah. um i think she is there she's in there somewhere because mm-hmm. joe was in communication with them keeping up with how she was doing and her progress and so they could have gotten a phone call like that and that's why they started showing up we don't really know all we know is there was sort of a, a radio silence with everyone except for joe for about a decade before other people started showing up except for joe and except for the godparents yeah and now to ensure that you stay well fed here is your conspiracy of the week. How did Eunice, after a decade of being in the dark, finally find out what happened to Rosemary? We have a few theories. Well, to recap what happened. Go ahead. Rosemary gets a lobotomy, and at that point in time, Eunice is in college and going to Convent of the Sacred Heart, Manhattanville. And she's hearing about all of these outbursts from her parents about Rosemary because they're happening daily. You don't think that she knew? Bethany, I'm, I'm pointing to the plane. Err. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think? Because you were like, mm, did she yeah, know? for sure. <laughs> I know that she knew that because she said when Rosemary turned about 21 years old, she began to get sort of quote unquote emotional is what uh, Eunice said. And she began to have these outbursts of frustration and anger and violence towards others. And we know from Lem, JFK's best friend, that she was having these like physical altercations with people every single day. Sometimes multiple times a day. Yes. And so all of the family was aware of it. It was not a secret. It was not hidden from any of the siblings. No. And Lem said that it was scary. It was definitely like a alarming. Thing. Yeah. And, and I'm sure for the younger kids, they were being like rushed out of the room mm-hmm. and We'll circle back to this, but that also might be why Ted was like, oh, crap, if I do that. (laughs) Yes, because she she it wasn't just that she like randomly one one day day. poofed. She was like behaving badly and then she disappeared. Quote unquote. Yeah. Behaving badly. Having temper tantrums in a nine year old's point of view. Right. She was misbehaving. And then she disappeared. Which is very scary for a child. See, it's like stuff like that just doesn't like compute really until you like break it down think about yes. what is actually going on. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, think about being in the house. Think about being upstairs and Rosemary is screaming and you're a little kid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So then 
she's also having these epileptic seizures. So so all in all, Eunice was extremely aware of what was going on with Rosemary and, and worried and worried about her at that point in time. And what do you do with a family member that you're very close to and you're worried about? You either call them or if it's Rosemary, you might ask your mom. Then one day while Eunice is attending school, Rosemary just disappears. She's not at home. I don't know what their parents could have told Eunice. But anyway, Christmas comes along. And we know that the parents told the younger kids that Rosemary was off teaching somewhere in like the Midwest. Yeah. (laughs) The place that you can't find anyone. They were like, she's on a prairie. Long gone. Don't worry about trying to call her. (laughs) (laughs) So then they all gather for Christmas in 1941 at their like family vacation home. They all gather because they're all like in random places. So Joe Jr. is in the military. He's in like Jacksonville, Florida. Jack is also enlisted. He is in Washington, D.C. pushing paper. Pick (laughs) is volunteering for the Red Cross. So she's who knows where. Eunice was in Manhattan at the convent. Rose had all the younger kids with her. Joe Sr. was planning out Jack and Joe Jr.'s political futures. Everyone's like doing their thing. So they all gather for Christmas and it is a very, very, very abbreviated holiday for the Kennedy family. And we will revisit it again. But the whole world is falling apart. It's World War II. Europe is fully in the war already. When did we enter? I think in 41. When did the U.S. enter World War II officially? 41. December. So Christmas 41. So December 7th, 1941. Oh, yes. That gives so much context, too. Yeah, that's why, Not no only one, is the that's going why everyone missed it. Yeah. Not only is... The, okay. December 7th, 1941, the U.S. is attacked on home soil in Honolulu, Hawaii, at Pearl Harbor military base. Three weeks later, it's Christmas. The Kennedy family gathers very briefly, and then they immediately all go their separate ways, like, Full on dispersed. Yes. Like two days after Christmas, maybe the day after Christmas. I'm not sure. Cool. I love you. Merry Christmas. Here's your present. We got to go. We got to go because we're freaking fighting for our country and our freedom. And Kick is tending to the wounded with the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. So nobody really fully takes this topic head on of why there is someone very important missing, missing, except for Eunice. She was attending the school in Manhattanville. But it seems to me that she has been putting up a stink and asking a lot of questions and hounding her parents because instead of reconvening her studies at the convent in Manhattan, she gets transferred over winter break from New York and her mom enrolls her in Stanford University in California. So mid mid school year. Mid school year and literally from one coast to the other. For why? As far as you can get. So Historians theorize that it may have been due to one missing sister and Eunice would be the one to freaking notice it. Historians believe that maybe Rose would have thought that the distance from home would have kind of distracted Eunice and not allowed her to think about it so much or it wouldn't have been like so in her face, this disappearance of Rosemary. Also, maybe just the fact of like having to acclimate to a new place, a new school, it gives you a distraction because yes. everything's new. Not only would it help her mental health because she was very worried about it, but also it would shut her up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like get her to stop asking questions because mm-hmm. they, didn't, they weren't would- ready to talk about it. Well, it doesn't seem to have helped because as we know, Eunice appeared disheveled and very, very thin and very worried um, and a very frail state at Stanford. All of her peers remember her as just being, yeah, like very unwell. You can, yeah, you can tell that she's just like depressed, distracted, not doing well, not stable. So Rose moves across the country, leaves all of her other children and moves in with Eunice at Stanford in California and literally I cut this out of the main episode because we just had so much to talk about and I wanted to focus on Rosemary but Rose was going to Eunice's university classes with her like are you really that concerned for her well-being and her health and her mental health is she really doing that bad like she's so depressed 
you you're need to like having to wake her up her. yeah and wake her up in the mornings and like pull her out of her apartment and make sure that she is going to her classes so i mean that's severe mm-hmm. and i mean it had to have been severe for her to move across the country and for rose to leave her little kids because she still had little kids at home yeah eunice is not one to need help um she's the middle child so she should be like lost in the mix yeah she should just be like one of the numbers she was super academic super organized dots all her eyes crosses her t's did not need rose yeah to baby eunice her. is taken care of always and so she's getting special special treatment and all of her mother's attention which she herself said no one ever got but rosemary and why in the world would your mother be going to college classes with you like yeah that's not a normal situation no so Eunice is obviously very depressed very affected by this and then her parents proceed to still not clue her in not tell her so she can stay in her torment for a decade they did not tell her where Rosemary was what happened but then somehow 10 years later when there's like less of a pressing issue to tell her she finds out So you would have thought that like if she cracked her parents, it would have been closer, like, I don't know, closer to the event. Maybe her parents just had time to process through it. And then they were like, all right, it's time. Or here's where our conspiracy comes in. The first, I feel like likely character would be someone Bethany brought up. Eddie and Mary Moore, Rosemary's godparents, because obviously they were clued in on the situation. They were helping take care of it. They were helping... Check in on Rosemary, make sure she got regular visits. They were also very responsible for Rosemary. And so I'm thinking, okay, 10 years later, they were already adults. I don't know when they died and I can totally look this up, but I'm just theorizing right now. Maybe someone was like on their deathbed. Maybe even they got like a, a diagnosis or something that didn't actually kill them, but they were worried about it. They were like, oh my gosh, one day I may not be here for Rosemary and I want to make sure that she's got people who knows who know where she is and who know what's going on and people who love her, who are going to show up regularly and be there for her because we know that companionship is such a big deal to her and her parents are not showing up. So they're like, we, got, we have to tell Eunice and we know she doesn't know. So it was a deathbed godparent that revealed the truth a decade later to Eunice about her missing sister because we know (gasps) oh my gosh wait a second what I just looked this up Edward wait a second second, wait a second wait a second okay yeah Edward Moore Eddie Moore stop Rosemary's godfather the one who like kept the most tabs on her along with his wife Mary died in 1952. No freaking way, dude. We cracked that code. <laughs> exactly <laughs> a decade after. And Eunice the was like, tell one, tell all. I was in the dark for one decade. Hint, hint, clue. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Bethany, you cracked the freaking code, you sleuth. I don't even know if that's true. But that could just be insane. But no, it has to insane. be. It has to be. Why would just randomly they're like, all right, we'll tell her. Yeah, and either it was Eddie or it was his wife, and she was like, okay, I'm the last person to know. Yeah, I'm not going to be freaking, I'm not going to to my deathbed with this secret, because who knows how I'll die. I could die in a plane crash or a car wreck. And she ended up dying in a fire, by the way. Freaking a freak accident. Tragic. The Kennedy curse lives on. Oh my gosh, guys. (gasps) This is real time. So we solved it. There you go. That's the theory, and that's the conspiracy. Insane. Um, But also, if you ever think of more conspiracies when while we're doing oh our, yes please, please tell us your theories. tell us tell us on patreon or on instagram dms or email us wow i'm so proud of you that's so crazy like, okay so that's what one the- theory Ooh, that's one theory that them. is now like maybe an actual theory because yeah, i was like why would, why did i even like, the truth i mean it just like makes so much sense but yeah and that's obviously thing, we don't like know a, that. Be- a deathbed confession yeah oh uh, yeah that's kind of crazy and wow he never got to see jfk be president <gasps> You're right. Or Bobby do all of his stuff or Eunice start the Special Olympics, which would have been the, probably the biggest deal to him. Oh, my gosh. And that brings up the uh, what year did JFK die? 60, 63. Three. And she died in the fire in 64. So Rosemary lost like back to back to back to back like that. Well, not even just Rosemary, because they were like the close. They're in so many fam- Kennedy family photos. They, lost and they traveled a lot with them people. all the time, like back to back to back to back to back. I mean, that's for future episodes. And then, holy frick. 
Okay. Anyways. Wow. So, okay, that was crazy and a real conspiracy. The other thought thought that we had, which now I feel like it's not as plausible, but we'll still talk about it, (laughs) was Kick. Because she had the information and the puzzle pieces to be able to put it together back in 1941. Because, if you remember, she was the one who went to the journalist to ask about lobotomies, about this brain procedure, this brain surgery. And then a few months later, her (laughs) sister magically, mysteriously disappears. So you would be like, you did not. Like, she would have been able to ask that question. She's the one who heard firsthand from the journalist, you don't want this done. This is what it does to people. They're gone, just gone. Yeah. And then her sister disappears and she knows that her parents were looking into that. So that would be one of your first thoughts. Oh my gosh. So what would Kick do with this information? She would tell Jack. (laughs) (laughs) She would first get on a freaking phone call and call Jack. There are a couple of things that she could have done. She could have confronted her parents about it. They were like, yeah, it's not good, but it's done. We can't do anything about it now. And we don't want to tell your younger siblings yet because it's going to crush them. And we already can't process it right now. So we we want to wait. And that adds too to the survive, being in survival mode for the parents. They didn't have time to process it because the world war was happening. Joe was like partially responsible to take care of those matters. Her firstborn sons were in the middle of this war and she didn't know if they were about to be sent off on the front lines or what was happening with that. She also, didn't know if her daughter was being like re-traumatized every day, like taking care of these people who were yeah. in insane physical condition because of the war. Also, Nazi spies were infiltrating the family. Mm-hmm. Also, people on, at Washington were keeping tabs on the family. The FBI and the CIA had cases on the family, which obviously we, we will be talking about. But there, there are, are a huge... lot of pressures and stresses in the family. Yeah. And then Eunice is losing her mind, depressed across the freaking country. And Teddy is still like nine years old. Jean is like 13 or something. Yeah. And you're trying to make sure, okay, I'm not losing taps on the babies of the family because like they're not getting left behind. They're still getting the education, the care, the love. And it's like time to hit the ground running with Joe Jr. and Jack's career. career. All of this chaos kick is like, I have this insane huge massive dark crazy horrible secret burning a hole in my pocket and my brain and my heart so yeah she could have just been like I'm just gonna carry this either out of supplication to her parents and obedience or Bethany had this other thought that maybe she was like okay my dad's right we can't do anything about this and all I'm gonna do by telling my other siblings is hurt them yeah, maybe. And I already don't want to have this burden. I already don't want to know this. Why would I spread that misery and hopelessness around? And we do know that Kick was the like pseudo oldest yeah. sister. And she did feel a responsibility for her younger siblings. So I can so see her thinking my duty is to protect my younger siblings and coming to that conclusion of like, this is the best thing to do. Either yeah. that or it was just as, a, as respect for her parents. She could have been freaked out that her parents were in such emotional distress that like yeah, if her adding to it, boat. yeah, that, that freaked her out. It was out. a fragile situation. Or she could have not wanted to admit it to herself. Like mm-hmm. she would have thought, okay, this is probably what happened, but she didn't want to ask her parents for fear or, that that was the truth and they were going to say, yeah, right. and that's her worst nightmare. She and just then, avoided it altogether because if she's ignorant, then, you know, ig- ignorance is bliss. And yes. You can just avoid the situation. If you can not have to know without a shadow of a doubt that that right. is what happened, then you can keep, it's easier for you to deny it for, to yourself, but also to kind of keep that charade going for your younger siblings and the rest of the family. Or she could have asked her parents and her parents said, absolutely not. What are you talking about? You're crazy. And so she didn't have the testimony or like the proof. Co- confirmation or proof that that is what happened. And so she was just like, Okay, well, if I don't know for for sure, I'm not going to spread that because that's obviously horrible and I don't want it to be true. Kick could have kept this secret for years and years and years. And then she's finally like things had calmed down. She's like, I need to tell my sister because Eunice would have been the closest in age and the closest to Rosemary. And she's like, I've got to tell Eunice like it's it's hurting me that I know that she doesn't know where her sister is and her sister's still alive. Mm -hmm. Like Eunice literally could have been thinking she is dead this whole time. Yeah. So she could have revealed the secret. 
that or Jack could have revealed the secret because he found out maybe. Yeah. Are we like even t- saying that Kiki's dying? No. Okay. I thought about that, but no. Because she could have died, written it in a journal. Oh. This is what happened. And then Eunice a decade later, because <gasps> it would be like a few years after she died, she's going through all of her stuff and then it's in the journal. This is just like a movie. <laughs> Should you say that? It's buried in the KFM. Yeah, it's buried. Only the most okay. loyal listeners will know. All right. A few years, just shy of a decade later, Kick dies. And if she would have had journals, which we know that the Kennedys were huge ex- writers, extremely well <laughs> written, communicators and, on paper. Yes, they wrote tons of letters to their friends, to their family, and kept diaries, journals, yeah, journals. And so, if she, if she had written down what she knew or what she speculated in Her a journal, deepest darkest secret. After she dies. A few years later, Eunice is going through her stuff, finds this journal, reads this journal, and finds out what happened the truth. to Rosemary. Dun, dun, dun. Could be so many things, but those are a few of our like little speculations of like do, what could have happened. Do, 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 do. Okay, so now that we're talking about the siblings, let's talk more about their perspective on all of this because, oh my gosh, talk about family secrets and talk about <laughs> baggage. So quickly, because... Ted and Jean are the two youngest out of the nine siblings. Their knew perspective, the yeah, they knew the least, which can sometimes be the most harm almost because you know bits and pieces, you've overheard things, but you don't really know what happened. And clearly a child's mind will warp reality because poor little Teddy. Was he like quoted saying this or like yeah. what in the world he thought? He said, when I was little and Rosemary disappeared, I thought I better behave because the same thing might happen to me. And at first I was like, what the crap? That's such a random yeah, weird like, thought. Why are you so scared of your parents? Yeah. And like, what did you think happened? And as a nine-year-old, if you just knew like, no information, that's such a weird thing that come to think. from. Yeah. Except when you put it into context and you think, oh, she's having all of these major outbursts. Biting people, hitting people, punching people, ripping people's hair out. In a young kid's mind. This you is are a tan- being bad. Yeah, you're being bad. This is a temper tantrum. You are misbehaving and you get punished. Mm-hmm. That's what happens to me when I misbehave. You when get I throw disciplined. Fits. And he thought, oh my God. I have to go to the corner and Rosemary disappeared mm-hmm. because she was older and bigger and she misbehaved more often. So that Scary. is what Ted was thinking. Poor kid. And I don't know what Jean must have been thinking, but I do know that she was also fairly close to Rosemary because she's the one who took her out to the movies all the time. And she was still at home and not ha- she didn't have like a crazy busy life while Rosemary was at home like everyone else did, like the older siblings did. We know that Rosemary was left alone with the younger kids a lot. Um, so Jean being the closest in age out of all of those people and being no, the only girl. Pat. Oh, that's true. Where Just, the crowd was Pat. <laughs> honestly, where were you ever? Literally, Lord knows what Jean and Pat thought was going on or even Bobby. They're just lost in the yeah. middle. They're lost in the chaos. Also, Joe is like... We don't know a lot about Joe Jr. right there. I Because I, he's so separate from the family right. and he is off at training. He's just so serious and not entertained by the chitter chatter. Like, don't go to Joe Jr. with your gossip. <laughs> with your speculation. <laughs> he will be lifting weights in front of your face and be like not listening to you you know what I mean yeah literally me. like you're just like yeah. <laughs> the last sibling to address is Jack the reason we want to speculate about Jack is that his actions right after Rosemary's lobotomy and 10 15 years down the line are very different mm-hmm. we kind of yeah want so to- it's interesting to know like what did he know why did he change his behavior and his yeah, his perspective it seems you're already an adult why it's not like you were a kid and you didn't really know or you didn't understand the depth yeah. of things you should probably go visit your grandparents kind of a thing but you don't know that as a kid and then yeah. you get older and wiser and he had like graduated college yeah so why in the world jack after so many years decides one day randomly oh i should probably go see my sister and also how did he find out and also why in the world was he such a crap brother that he didn't go see her for so many years so one of our theories is that jack didn't go and visit rosemary for for so long when they were really close as kids was because like we said earlier with the joe thing they didn't want to upset rosemary and they were maybe being told by her caregivers by doctors that your presence upsets her and she has these outbursts these explosions when you come it's better to 
allow her to stay in her normal routine. Do not disrupt her normal Mm -hmm. routine. You're reopening a wound every time that you come and visit her. Or you're confusing her. She doesn't know who you are and you're bothering her. Like you're disturbing her peace. Right. And she's just confused. So maybe the doctors were telling her, telling them this, the family this, or telling just Joe this. And Joe was... um, Relaying information. Yes. Communicating it to the family. And so Jack thinks I would be selfish. It would be a selfish move. I want to go see her for me, but for her, it's not really doing anything. Mm -hmm. Joe is visiting her semi-frequently throughout the years and realizes, oh, she is coming to, she's conscious. I think it would be a good idea for Jack to go visit his sister. I think that she will remember him. And that would be either good for Rosemary or good for Jack. The other reason would be that he actually didn't know, that Kick didn't share that information with him, that the parents did not tell them when they went to Palm Beach in Florida for Christmas, that he just didn't know what went on really and he and it wasn't his responsibility and he was responsible for other things and you know mom and dad always had rosemary taken care of she was always off at some school and he was never responsible for her whereabouts so he just trusted whatever his parents said oh also that brings up a good we're foreshadowing so much because the timelines cross over between this episode and next episode but the world war was happening U.S. enters the World War. Jack is off um, serving. Huge, huge things happen. Huge things for Jack and huge yeah. things for the family. Yeah. We'll get into all of it, but it just know A that ton of pressure falls on Jack's shoulders. A exactly. A ton of His weight. entire life changed uh, uh, very shortly after. And that was definitely, like, for sure, factually, at the front of Jack's mind. Yeah. It, like, it wouldn't have been like, oh, that's the least of my worries. But if he didn't know there was a problem or an issue that needed to be addressed, he wouldn't have gone digging for any drama or problems because he had enough to think about. Mm -hmm. He had enough to fix. He had enough to live up to. He had enough pressure. Mm -hmm. And for the family, too, it wasn't a like just career, solely career thing. It was for the this is what the family is is asking of me right now. And this is what I need to do for everyone. Mm -hmm. So he maybe, too, in a sense, thought, oh, I am taking care of Rosemary this way. Yeah. And if he was being told Rosemary's teaching in the Midwest or Rosemary's at a convent school that's really good for her and she's thriving, he was thinking, okay, awesome. Mom is visiting her. The sisters are visiting her. The boys are doing other things. Right Here's now. the thing. Oh, if you're hearing a good story that you want to believe is true, that's wonderful, and you don't really have that much question or that many pieces of evidence or that many weird interactions, you don't, you don't really have much to question. You don't really... Why would you go digging for problems that you don't even really know are there when you're There's getting so a, you're many. receiving a story that totally makes sense f- that lines up with the rest of your experience your entire life and, and that are be, you're being told by people that you trust and yes, respect. Yes, that's what I was going to say. So after years and years he goes and visits her. Well, Joe brings it up. Joe his dad. Yes. Is like, "Hey, I know where your sister is and I think it'd be a good idea for you, for you to visit her and go see her. Before he goes and actually sees his sister, he doesn't really like feel the weight called? or responsibility or connection. Yeah. Or like the urgency. Thank you. Of focusing on those types of bills that are being brought up. That conversation is happening. These papers are coming across his desk and he's not doing anything about them. He's not going to the Senate hearings to hear about it. He he's doesn't not see it investigating. As a, he doesn't see it as a pressing issue until. And which halfway makes sense because of all the different pressing issues that were happening at yeah. that time. But also it should be close to home. Like, yes. Come on. Hello. It's your sister. Yeah. And you've had that personal experience and you love your sister. You, your, your whole life you were trying to protect and accommodate for her. Mm -hmm. And we know that. And you loved doing it. Yeah. So what the heck? And then he goes and sees her. And I don't know if it brings up everything that he's forgotten, everything that he's pushed to the back burner, or if he is enlightened in that visit and he didn't know what was going on or, or that anything was catastrophic or anything like that. Maybe he thought legit she was fine. She just had to go be away from the family because she kept beating people up. But it it did, it did wasn't fine. Her, her situation ended in complete tragedy. And once he saw that, once he saw his sister gone, it just completely wrecked him. And from that point forward, he, in the midst of the largest crisis America has ever faced, when he is at the helm, he is the one responsible. It will go down in history as his 
problem, his fault, his responsibility. He takes time and money and puts it towards mental retardation, quote unquote, policies, bills and laws and advocacy and new programs and changes legislation for his sister alongside Eunice. Obviously, she helped him a lot as well, but it was Jack. I mean, Jack was the president. Jack was going to be the one to answer for all of the decisions. And Bobby was right there, too. Bobby went through all the the stress of being responsible for the decisions made in, in the Oval Office when Jack was president. I know that their dad encouraged them in the decisions that they made and the the things that they focused on while they were in office. So it was obviously a family joint effort, but it was Jack, you know, Mm -hmm. he did, he, they, I feel like it would have been an easy answer and maybe not for the Kennedys, but for normal people, it would have been an easy explanation. I'm sorry. I love that. And I believe in it, but now's not the time Mm -hmm. would have been an, would have been a very easy answer, but he didn't months before he died, he was passing laws and legislations in such a a catastrophic, very, very pressure cooker, fragile moment. I think another huge life lesson that we can take away from Rosemary's story, even when you make bad decisions and with hindsight, you realize, okay, I really shouldn't have done that or I should have known whatever. You can at least know like for yourself that you don't have to hide in shame. Shame is so such a a thief. Mm -hmm. It's so debilitating and evil. Yeah, you talk to any therapist out there and they're going to tell you the thing that makes most people turn to suicide, to addiction, to things that destroy their life. It is all based in shame and trying to hide or trying to cover up feelings or lifestyles or whatever it is. And the Kennedys were so good at moving on from things and letting things go. Mm -hmm. Even though Rose struggled in that and Joe struggled in that, and they were able to conquer it. And even though they screwed up decades of their life and did they they were wrong for years and years and years at a time they didn't let their whole life go to waste because of shame and I do want to bring that up the lobotomy is not the end of the story Mm -hmm. and though it was catastrophic and it took so much away from Rosemary and it took took so much of her potential and life experiences that she could have had her life still went on and her family used the love that they had for Rosemary to literally spread that acceptance and love to the entire world. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. And although Rosemary had to endure such pain because of this decision and because of the lobotomy, she did not and the Kennedys did not allow it to determine the rest of Rosemary's life. And her purpose was not over. And I do think that that is such a cool story Mm -hmm. for people to take and kind of like mold and be applied to their own life and their own story. And maybe just people in your life that you can spread this message to as well, that your life isn't over when bad things happen or even when you make bad decisions, you get to dictate what happens after that. And Rosemary... Like Cassie said, her love and her story changed the freaking world and you don't have to live in regret forever and you don't have to live in shame forever and you can move forward and make new decisions and become a new person day by day, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And if someone with such a freaking huge image and such a big skeleton in their closet as the Kennedys, if they can move on and change the the story story and turn it around and forego shame and walk away from that and walk into love and purpose and be so brave than you can too Mm -hmm. because they had a lot more people digging for skeletons in their closet than we do. So we have our little like conspiracy of the week in every episode. We need to have a like Bethany's media recommendation or Bethany's. Oh, cute. Yeah. Um, there's another documentary on Netflix called The Reason I Jump. It is about kids on the spectrum. And that's also kind of like done with the parents perspective at the forefront, kind of like uh, Far From the Tree is narrated by the parents. And also part of it is narrated by someone who is on the spectrum sort of like have I seen this inside look no but I've talked to you about what's the one where he was like I'm trying 
that's the first that's far from the tree message that's, that he got across that's one was, of the kids from far from oh the tree my gosh. where he can't stop he that can't talk scene i will never and he spelled out i'm trying wrecked me i know i know i literally uh, could cry and that is why it. grace mm-hmm. in all situations humans are so just have stupid grace and we just literally don't know we don't know there's so much that we don't know anyways so watch far from the tree also watch the reason i jump because it does give a good perspective of someone who is, which Far From the Tree does too, but someone who's sort of trapped in their own mind and does not have typical skills and typical functioning. And and that's something that we have said too. If Rosemary was a, was born today and had the accommodations and like her family had tried as much as they tried back then, there would be like literally no questions about any anything. The Catholic camp or whatever there would have been places for her to to, to find herself yes. and to flourish people uh, would have world, accepted her the world war wouldn't have happened and she wouldn't have had to leave well, the nunnery that, that she was thriving at that too and then one of Eunice's quotes said that mother said the hardest thing growing up was for uh, to get other children to play with rosemary and i feel like that's being destigmatized yeah, yeah that's being solved parents are being more educated and are more aware of inclusivity because back then gosh they literally were telling people that down syndrome was contagious yeah oh my gosh all right you guys to sum it all up cassie and i have come down to two possible explanations from our perspective taking into context the kennedy family all of the life events that we in the world global events that we just discussed Taking into consideration the education and the knowledge at the time, we think either the Kennedys thought that they didn't really do anything wrong, that they made a decision in a tough time and that the surgery went wrong, but it was a freak accident. A but tragedy. it wasn't, yeah, it, it wasn't that they chose a bad surgery, that they, they didn't know that lobotomies were just all bad. They thought that something went wrong during the surgery. And, and they wanted to handle the trauma accordingly. They wanted to minimize the familial damage. So they didn't hide in shame because they didn't technically, like they didn't think that they did anything wrong. It was a freak accident. And them ghosting Rosemary essentially and, and their absence in the following years after the lobotomy was merely ignorance. So that was it. The facts were the facts. There was nothing more to be done about Rosemary. She was gone and it was very painful to talk about. And that's why she's not mentioned in letters, but everyone was on the same page. Everyone knew. Well, everyone, I say everyone, the oldest kids and the parents were on the same page. She went into this surgery that could have cured her, but something went very wrong. Or they felt shame in being so stupid and ignorant about thinking that this risky surgery could magically heal her and they knew that there was a lot of risk there, but they were willing to take it. And then when it went very wrong, they were like, crap, we were so stupid. Why did we put all of Mm -hmm. our eggs in one basket and put all of our hopes in this miraculous surgery? And they just felt super embarrassed about these con artists, doctors swindling them into a surgery. Like how could they not have known? And so out of shame of that, they buried yeah, the story. Super, super powerful people don't want to look, they don't want to look like they got swindled. They don't want to look not intelligent. But for the sake of redeeming the Kennedy name, through looking at the family's actions, we obviously believe that they loved her as much as they could have. They took care of her in the best way that they were able to. And And she was a Kennedy. Yes. And after 23 years of them looking for answers, helping her, putting her out there, taking her to Harvard games and camps and to see the queen meet the freaking to meet the freaking queen they were at a loss and they made a desperate decision and it doesn't say anything bad about their character they were victims of the situation too Mm -hmm. it was a horrible situation but to them the situation was point blank that they couldn't go on how things were with rosemary hurting herself and hurting others you you just you make different decisions when you're in a desperate situation like that when someone that you love is in pain every single day and you feel that you are the only one with the power to do something about it mm-hmm. she can't help herself she's not going to be able to you out of everyone in the world you're the one that needs to protect her you're yeah. the one that has to make you're the her decisions only for her advocate you only Nobody else in the entire world cares enough or is in the position to do anything about it, you know? Yeah. So it's up to you. Not doing something about it would have been neglect or abuse. And 
that was not about to be your story. That was not about to be Rosemary's story, that she was forgotten. Yeah. And the Kennedys never didn't take action. You know, when things popped up, they, they did something about they it. They weren't going to let it be someone else's problem. They made the wrong decision, but it was not a hateful or selfish act. No. And, and that, that is the, the case of, of the Rosemary. story. <laughs> I'm like, it's a story. But then he's like, we solved the case. <laughs> Oh, that was a freaking load. And I hope that her story can live on through people telling it through word of mouth spread. Yeah. Send this story to someone because it is a story of redemption. It is a story of hope. It is a story of love and loss. Rosemary has changed our lives. And I Absolutely. know Rosemary has changed so many others lives. Allow her legacy to live on. Don't let her tragedy be in vain. Allow it to help other people. It's done so much good, but it can still do more. Stand up for those whom you love, forgive, link arms, and turn your biggest tragedy, your biggest shame, your biggest pain. sin, your biggest pain, take that from the evil shame that wants to bury it and turn it into good. Allow it to empower you and to make you a better person, make you a better contributor, a better servant in this world. And with that, we're out. Wow, we did it. We bloody well did it. Join us here next week to hear all about Joe Jr.'s Nazi beliefs, Joe Kennedy's hand in World War II, and the epiphany that changed Jack forever. Thank you all for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please give us a review on Apple, rate us on Spotify, and share Blood and Business with a friend or a sibling. If you'd like to support the show, the best way is to become a patron of Blood and Business. You will get bonus content every month, including a monthly bonus episode, interactive main episodes, and behind the scenes footage. To keep up with us day to day, you can follow us at Blood and Business on Instagram and TikTok. You can find the link for Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon in the show notes below. Thank you so much for the support, and we will see you back here next week for your regularly scheduled programming on Blood and Business. I'm like out of breath. <laughs> Dude, me all the time. But like in the middle of the thing when I never got up or did anything, I'm just like, <laughs> I think it's because I like try to hold my breath while you're talking to not like be breathing be in like, the microphone. <laughs> yeah. And then while I'm talking, I'm trying to like not make weird mouth noises or like, <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're just like shallow breathing so the I'm whole time. Like, and then you can't. Trying to hold it together. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I usually out of breath.